So, hi guys. Almost four years since I've had the Sony RX10 Mark IV, and it was actually announced in July, I think, um, four years ago. So, I just thought I'd talk about some of the things over the last four years that I've liked and disliked about the camera. I've taken over 320,000 shots with it so far, and there's a few things I dislike about it, but, you know, it's not the end of the world, and we know there's nothing per perfect, but... You know, sometimes there's a bit of frustration when you're utilising a piece of equipment. It doesn't matter what camera you're using, nothing is 100% brilliant, you know. Um, and I've definitely captured a lot of shots with the RX-10 that I have missed or would have missed if I was using my A7R4, for example, because I would have had to swap lenses and, you know, big lenses in the bag and all that sort of stuff. But the EVF um, is one thing, and I know a lot of people talk about it. The EVF is too small. It's also very hard, the eyepiece. It doesn't really work very well it's very uncomfortable so I tend to sit back from it very slightly the electric zoom which you can see there is it's okay I mean it works really well for video but it's quite annoying you know because it can be quite slow and also the fact you can't focus and zoom in and out at the same time which you can do obviously with a, a manual zoom lens um, it's quite hard to clean um, there's lots of grooves and, and things like that the you know around the the zoom part of the lens and the focus ring it gets in with grit and everything like that, and I've used it many times with, you know, out, out in extreme weather, and it's had sand and everything. The uh, the flash, it's a shame you can't bounce it, so it only goes forwards. Um, some other little smaller cameras out there, you can actually pull it backwards, um, which, you know, would be quite nice to be able to do. Um, the camera's mad. It is an amazing bit of kit, but the buffer speed can be annoying when you're waiting for it to record to the... Um, the SD card sometimes if you you know push it. Um, weather sealing it's definitely quite well weather sealed. I've soaked it and many many times here. As you can see, just a glass of water being poured over it. It didn't care. It'll just but when I'm using it, I always have make sure I've got a cloth with me. And if it is raining, I make sure I take the battery out at the end and make sure I give the barrel of the lens a nice clean and just leave it out like that to dry to so make sure there's no um, water that's going to be pulled in with the uh, the lens as it goes in so there even though there's rubber o-rings in there uh, just gives it a bit extra help i have also just so you notice the if you notice the water wasn't really sticking to the camera i've actually ceramic coated it so using the same stuff i use on my car um, it just protects it a bit more so it's quite a quite a good way of doing it, it keeps it cleaner dust doesn't stick to it as much etc etc um HFR mode, uh, love it, but it's upscaling, um, which is a shame, so it doesn't become very usable above sort of 500 frames per second, it's okay, uh, and you have to add a bit of extra contrast, maybe a little bit of sharpening, 1,000 frames per second I rarely use. Build quality is great, um, but yeah, there's it, a couple of bits and pieces in there, like the zoom ring and everything, I don't really quite like the way it it is. Um, SDR, sorry, SD card slot is too small. So if you've got big hands, yeah, you can bounce the card out, as in flick it out kind of thing. Um, but I've stuck some tape on it. So it helps helps you get your fingers in there. And, uh, you know, it's, it works really well. Um, a few amazing things. So, this, I mean, it's not bad at all. I mean, we, we, we know that, um, you know, it's an amazing camera. And, you know, yeah, it's got an invariant sensor, like a lot of the Sonys have. So it means you have got on this camera ISO 100-800 with no real issues so basically you can shoot at lower ISO and boost it uh, in RAW uh, quite nicely with no real loss of quality so that works quite nicely the stabilization I've worked out now after <laughs> using I don't really do that much video on it really but now I've worked out that if you have it in particular modes you can actually use the intelligent stabilization which is great for doing a little bit of vlogging and walking so it smooths it out nicely it actually works quite well almost like a mini gimbal um, the focusing modes so obviously i just shoot in full manual so it can focus really closely uh, at wide angle 24 mil but if you go to 600 the equivalent of 600 that you can focus at 72 centimeters so it's really really good for that but when you come about halfway back out you kind of lose that sort of um ability so in between sort of zoom sort of 200 to say four five hundred or something you're kind of a little bit limited because it does lose its ability for close focus the fn button absolutely brilliant it means you can set your camera up and hardly ever go into the menus um you know so that that's a real real good thing but unfortunately it's not quite as um, customizable as the newer cameras um brilliant thing is it's got 24 frames per second stills with tracking 
and it's still up there with the A1 and the A9, and the A92 with, for speed, really. Um, you know, it gets some amazing shots and it's fast. So that's a real, real good thing about that camera. Even though it's four years old, it's still very, very quick. Um, yeah, I mean, that's about it, really. Uh, I just wanted to put a bit out there, really. I just thought, well, you know, we're still waiting for the Mark V or whatever they may release. Hopefully they release something, but we don't know yet. Still no um, rumours as such. Not new ones anyway, which is a shame. But, uh, yeah, anyway, um, yeah, let me know what you think below. Is there anything you really hate about the camera or really love about the camera? Um, it's an amazing, amazing bit of kit. The, the lens on there is absolutely amazing, super sharp as well. And, um, you know, it's very, very usable. The camera is, is super usable. And the value it is now, it's actually come down in price quite a lot, is makes it very affordable and basically a high-end pro camera in an all-in-one body. Uh, with the function side of things it's absolutely amazing so anyway like i say leave some comments below let me know what you think about the camera you know or if you've got any troubles with it anything like that please let me know and i'll try and help um but also remember we know nothing's perfect we know everything out there has its downsides and its upsides um but i just thought you know i just thought i'd have a chat really about it uh so yeah here's to waiting and hearing from a new beefier updated version of some sort uh, for us to want and need as the next thing so yeah don't forget to click the subscribe button little notification bell as well and i'll see you soon